Hello students and welcome to the lecture on nuclear lamina, transport across nuclear envelope, chromatin, organization of chromatin. The main objectives of today's lecture are to give a brief introduction of nucleus and structure of the nucleus, to explain nuclear membrane, nuclear pore, to explain nuclear lamina in detail, to give a clear idea of transport of materials across the nucleus, to explain chromatin structure and its molecular organization. Now, let me begin with the first part of today's lecture, the nucleus. The most prominent feature of a eukaryotic cell when viewed under the microscope is the nucleus. It's an almost universal structure of eukaryotic cells at some time during their life cycle, although some cells as the sieve tubes of vascular plants and the red blood cells of mammals may lose their nuclei by the time they are fully differentiated. Generally, all the cells are uninucleate or mononucleate, but in certain cases binucleate condition occurs as in paramecium caudatum. Here, one nucleus is smaller, which is micronucleus, while the other is the larger, called the macro or the meganucleus. In few others, the poly or multinucleate condition exists, as in opalina, striated muscle fibers, etc. Here, it's mandatory to explain the parts of the nucleus. Number one, nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane regulates the flow of materials between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Ultrastructural studies reveal that the nuclear envelope is actually composed of two membranes separated by a perinuclear space that is 110 to 400 angstrom wide. In most cells, the nuclear membrane is observed to break down and reform as the cell enters and completes division. However, in some algae, protozoans and fungi, it does not break down during cell division. Nucleoplasm. It's nearly transparent, non-staining, ground substance of nucleus, which is a semi-fluid colloidal complex formed of number of chemicals like nucleotides, nucleoside triphosphates, proteins, enzymes, DNA polymerase, minerals, etc. In eggs and in larger cells, example estabularia, the nuclear sap is clearly visible. Many metabolic pathways have also been demonstrated in nuclear sap similar to cytoplasm. These include glycolysis, hexose monophosphate shunt, citric acid cycle, etc. Number third, nuclear matrix. Nuclear matrix or nuclear skeleton is a fine network of proteinaceous fibrils that transverse the whole nucleus. The fibrils are similar to intermediate filaments and are called fibrous lamina or nuclear lamina. Fibrous lamina is in direct contact with the inner membrane of nuclear envelope. It is 150 to 300 angstrom thick but can be even more. Nuclear matrix has acid proteins. Number four, chromatin. It is an intranuclear system of brightly stained, long and fine fibrils which overlap one another and form an apparent network known as chromatin reticulum. Chromatin fibers contain genetic information. They are formed of DNA histone complexes. The units of the later are nucleosomes. Chemically, chromatin consists of DNA 31%, RNA 5%, histone proteins 36%, and non-histone proteins, 28%. Number fifth, nucleolus. The nucleus contains a large, spherical, and acidophilic dense granule known as the nucleolus. It is not surrounded by any membrane. The nucleolus makes the ribosomal subunits from proteins and ribosomal RNA. It was well established in 19th century that the size of nucleolus is related with the synthetic activity of the cell. Therefore, the cell with little or no synthetic activities, example sperm cells, blastomers, muscle cells, etc., are found to contain smaller or no nucleoli, while the oocytes, neurons, and secretory cells, which synthesize the proteins or other substances, contain comparatively large sized nucleoli. The number of the nucleoli in the nucleus in the cells may be one two or four. The position of the nucleolus in the nucleus is eccentric. Under light microscope, nucleolus appears to be homogeneous or vacuolated. 
electron microscope has shown it to be made of four parts, amorphous matrix, granular part, fibrillar part and chromatin part. Now let us discuss the nuclear envelope in detail. Like other cell membranes, the nuclear membranes are phospholipid bilayers which are permeable only to small nonpolar molecules. Other molecules are unable to diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. The nuclear envelope has a complex structure consisting of two nuclear membranes and underlying nuclear lamina and nuclear pore complexes. The outer nuclear membrane is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum, so the space between the inner and outer nuclear membranes is directly connected with the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum and has ribosomes bound to its cytoplasmic surface. In contrast, the inner nuclear membrane carries unique proteins that are specific to the nucleus. The critical function of the nuclear membranes is to act as a barrier that separates the contents of the nucleus from the cytoplasm. The inner and the outer nuclear membranes are joined at nuclear pore complexes, the sole channels through which the small polar molecules and macromolecules are able to travel through the nuclear envelope. Underlying the inner nuclear membrane is the nuclear lamina, a fibrous meshwork that provides structural support to the nucleus. After discussing nuclear envelope, we will now discuss the nuclear pore. The two nuclear membranes are fused together at intervals to form pores approximately 600 angstrom in diameter. The nuclear pore complex consists of an assembly of eight spokes arranged around a central channel. The spokes are connected to rings at the nuclear and cytoplasmic surfaces and the spoke ring assembly is anchored within the nuclear envelope at sites of fusion between the inner and outer nuclear membrane. Protein filaments extend from both the cytoplasmic and the nuclear rings forming a distinct basket-like structure on the nuclear side. The central channel is approximately 40 nanometers in diameter which is wide enough to accommodate the largest particles able to cross the nuclear envelope. It contains a structure called the central transporter through which the active transport of macromolecules is thought to occur. The nuclear pore complexes are the only channels through which small polar molecules, ions and micromolecules like proteins and RNAs are able to travel between the nucleus and the cytoplasm by an active process in which the appropriate proteins and RNAs are recognized and selectively transported in only one direction that is from nucleus to cytoplasm or from cytoplasm to the nucleus. The second part of today's lecture is the nuclear lamina. The nuclear lamina is dense fibrillar network inside the nucleus of the most cells. It's composed of intermediate filaments and membrane associated proteins. Besides providing mechanical support, the nuclear lamina regulates important cellular events such as DNA replication and cell division. Additionally, it participates in chromatin organization and it anchors the nuclear pore complexes embedded in the nuclear envelope. Structure and composition. The nuclear lamina consists of two components, lamins and nuclear laminin associated membrane proteins. The laminins are type 5 intermediate filaments which can be categorized as either A type or B type according to homology of their DNA sequences, biochemical properties and cellular localization during the cell cycle. Lamin polypeptides have an almost complete alpha helical conformation with multiple alpha helical domains separated by a non-alpha helical linkers that are highly conserved in length and amino acid sequence. Both the C-terminus and the N-terminus are non-alpha helical with the C-terminus displaying a globular structure. The presence of lamin polypeptides is an exclusive property of amatozoan organisms. The most important are lamin associated polypeptide 1 and 2, amarin, lamin B receptor, autophin and man. The non-random organization of the genome strongly suggests that the nuclear lamina plays a role in chromatin organization. It has been shown that lamin polypeptides have an affinity for binding chromatin through their alpha helical rod-like domains at specific DNA sequences called matrix attachment regions. Lamin A and B can also bind core histones through a sequence elements in their tail domain. 
dear students let me now explain the transport of materials across nuclear envelope the nuclear envelope separates the contents of the nucleus from the cytoplasm and provides the structural framework of the nucleus the nuclear membranes acting as barriers that prevent the free passage of the molecules between the nucleus and the cytoplasm maintain the nucleus as a distinct biochemical compartment the entry and exit of large molecules from the cell nucleus is tightly controlled by the nuclear pore complexes although small molecules can enter the nucleus without regulation macromolecules such as rna and proteins require association with transport factors like karyophorins called importins to enter the nucleus and exportins to exit protein that must be imported to the nucleus from the cytoplasm carry nuclear localization signals that are bound by importance nuclear import important proteins bind their cargo in the cytoplasm after which they are able to interact with the nuclear pore complex and pass through its channel once inside the nucleus interaction with ran gtp causes a conformational change in the importin that causes it to dissociate from its cargo the resulting complex of importin and ran gtp then translocates to the cytoplasm where a protein called ran binding protein separates ran gtp from importin separation allows access to a gtps that bind ran gtp and induces the hydrolysis of gtp to gdp the ran gdp produced from this process now binds the nuclear transport factor 2 which returns it to the nucleoplasm now in the nucleus the ran gdp interacts with the guanine nucleotide exchange factor which replaces the gdp with gtp resulting again in ran gtp and beginning the cycle anew nuclear export nuclear export roughly reverses the import process in the nucleus the exportin binds the cargo and the ran gtp and diffuses through the pore to the cytoplasm where the complex dissociates ran gtp binds gap and hydrolyzes gtp and the resulting ran gdp complex is restored to the nucleus where it exchanges its bound ligand for gtp whereas importins depend on ran gtp to dissociate from their cargo exportins require ran gtp in order to bind to their cargo a specialized mrna exporter protein moves mature mrna to the cytoplasm after post transcriptional modification is complete this translocation process is actually dependent on the ran protein trna export is also dependent on the various modifications it undergoes thus preventing export of improperly functioning trna the trna exporter in vertebrates is called exportin t Exportin T binds directly to the tRNA cargo in the nucleus a process promoted by the presence of ran gtp once the complex has crossed the envelope it dissociates and releases the tRNA cargo into the cytosol now moving on to the last part of today's lecture that is the chromatin and the molecular organization of chromatin in eukaryotic cells the genetic material is organized into complex structure composed of dna and proteins and localized in a specialized compartment the nucleus the complex between the eukaryotic dna and proteins are called chromatin which typically contains about twice as much proteins as dna despite a enormous degree of compaction dna must be rapidly accessible to permit its interaction with protein machineries that regulates the function of chromatin chromatin has been divided into euchromatin heterochromatin Heterochromatin is defined as a structure that does not alter in its condensation throughout the cell cycle and is deeply stained whereas euchromatin is decondensed during interphase. Heterochromatin is localized principally on the periphery of the nucleus and euchromatin in the interior of the nucleoplasm. Heterochromatin is further of two types constitutive and facultative. Constitutive heterochromatin is that heterochromatin which is present in all cells and in all stages of life cycle. Constitutive heterochromatin containing few genes and formed principally of repetitive sequences located in large regions coincident with centromeres and telomeres. Facultative heterochromatin 
composed of transcriptionally active regions that can adopt the structural and functional characteristics of heterochromatin, such as the inactive X chromosome of mammals. Organization of chromatin. The nucleosome. The nucleosome is the fundamental unit of chromatin. It's composed of a core protein and a linker region that joins adjacent core particles. Core histones. The core particle is highly conserved between species and is composed of 146 base pairs of DNA wrapped 1.7 turns around a protein octamer H3, H4, H2A and H2B. Linker histones. Linker histones H1 and H5 associate with the linker region of the DNA between two nucleosome cores and unlike the core histones, they are not well conserved between species. The linker histones have a role in spacing nucleosomes and can modulate higher order compaction by providing an interaction region between adjacent nucleosomes. Chromatin assembly. The assembly of DNA into chromatin involves a range of events, beginning with the formation of the basic unit, the nucleosome, and ultimately giving rise to a complex organization of specific domains within the nucleus. The stepwise assembly can be described as the first step is the deposition of a tetramer of newly synthesized H3H4 to form a subnucleosomal particle which is followed by the addition of the two H2A and H2B dimers. This produces a nucleosomal core particle consisting of 146 base pairs of DNA wound around the histone octamer. This core particle and the linker DNA together form the nucleosome. Newly synthesized histones are specifically modified, for example, the acetylation of histone H4. The next step is the maturation step that requires ATP to establish regular spacing of the nucleosome cores to form the nucleofilament. During this step, the newly incorporated histones are deacylated. Next, the incorporation of linker histones is accompanied by folding of the nucleofilament into 30 nanometer fiber, the structure of which remains to be elucidated. Two principal models exist the solenoid model and the zigzag. Finally, further successive folding events lead to a high level of organization and specific domains in the nucleus. At each of the steps described, variation in the composition and activity of the chromatin can be obtained by modifying its basic constituents and the activity of the stimulatory factors implicated in the processes of its assembly and disassembly. Students, that's all about today's program. Hope you have understood and enjoyed well. Thank you and goodbye.